If you want to learn how to make Ghibli style textures in Substance Painter, the latest course from the 3D coloring book was made for you. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to consider getting the course. Now let's get into this week's video. Hello everyone, my name is Anastasia, I'm a 3D artist. Recently I made this stylus room and in this video I'm going to show you the process I went through to make it. I'll try to teach you some tips and tricks that you can use in your own stylized projects. My first idea was to make a modern witch inside and I wanted to create a kind of artistic mess with a lot of witch stuff like crystals, dry plants, spell jars, pentagrams and of course a lot more. I wanted to give this cozy and chill sensation so I found this artist, Elena Gnasinski, whose work is very inspiring to me. You can go check her out station for potential inspirations. She does a very good work. I usually like to make a quick sketch of my idea before modeling. Then I started a first blocking on Blender, but I wasn't satisfied because it was my first time making a stylus interior and something bothered me. So I decided to start from a single reference. When I'm looking for references, I like to go both on Pinterest and our station. I pick all artworks that make me dream by thinking about them in my creation. So I decided to take Anna Kazantseva's flower room concept, which corresponded exactly to the vibe I wanted to recreate. I used Perref for my references display. I picked some wedded structures, concept art, candles, representations, books both opened and closed, and finally interior plants. I started my modeling with a blocking of the room's base. Then I added some shelves, a chair, a table, and other details such as chamfers, wall breaks, and trunk stops. I like to add a camera very soon in my projects. It allows me to stick to a format I put on myself from the beginning and to recenter my vision when I'm moving objects. I took an habit to convert my objects into trigons due to my game design studies. Because when importing a 3D model to Unity, Unreal or whatever you want, the game engine will automatically convert the mesh into trigons. And in some cases, if the mesh doesn't have trigons, it can just mess it up. So here is my favorite part. Once my room's base is done, I could start sculpting. I use ZBrush and the Orb Brushes pack you can find for free on Gumroad. I mostly use this brush pack, plus two or three default ones. Here is basically the same process I use for every stylus sculpt I make. I'm starting by increasing the polygon's number with a dynamesh. Then I use the orb flatten brush to flatten every edges of my object. These imperfections give a first stylized impression by kinda revisiting the object's chamfers. After modifying the chamfers, I can now begin to add small details. Here I wanted to make some planks, so I used straight lines by holding down the shift key and drawing a line from a point to another. I'll now show you how I made the wood veins, if I can say it so. I basically took the orb crack brush, activated the lazy mouse and I drew along the planks. I used my pen's pressure on my tablet, which is a simple little Wacom Intuos tablet. These patterns couldn't be possible with a mouse, I guess, because it doesn't read different pressures. So the object here is supposed to be the floor and it's the biggest and most visible object of my scene. So it must be particularly well designed. I like to add some little details while keeping it stylized, of course. So I added scratches, thin and thick ones, then I used the overwork details to make the whole thing more deformed and give some relief. 
For the end wrap, I won't explain you all the details because it's something more technical than artistic. I just wanted to show that I went through this tedious process because it was necessary. So basically, I marked the seams, ripped them, made a material with Blender's default checker using texture coordinates and mapping nodes just to check if my end wrap was okay. Before baking, I make sure my lovely object get different materials if they are areas touching each other. I then bake a substance painter. I first import my lovely mesh and the software detects automatically the two different materials and creates two texture sets. I now can bake each part independently without having any problems like an area baking on another I don't want to. And now the texturing. I like using the bone stylized smart material for a stylized look. So here I will use it to make the wood texture. I first add to the dirt layer a multiply filter to increase its contrast and I change its color for a more wooded look. For the base I just need the color and the worthness properties. Uh, I put the worthness to its maximum and I change again the color. So here is basically the main wood texture which I duplicate and put on the other part of the shelf. Now I'll do the wood inside with a lighter color. Uh, I like this beige color and I don't change the worthness because it's good as it is. And now I add a mask on the main color. You can work with a black mask if you prefer adding texture, but here I will stick with a white one because I'm going to remove some parts of my layer to show the lower one. I can now paint the areas I want to affect the clear color to suggest the inside of the wood. And now I have my final shelf texture. I basically proceeded the same way for each wooded object of my room base, and here is the final result. After finishing my room, I modeled the plants. So for succulent plants, I started with a single leaf I made in locally. I put an empty plane axis for the origin and I applied a narrow modifier on the leaf. You can use it to repeat an object as much as you want. Here I used it to repeat my leaf in a circle with the help of the axis. When you mesh it like this, it's because its rotation or scale has been changed. So just press down Ctrl A and select the property you want to make as default. Now I can rotate my axis and my leaf is duplicated into a circle. I just need to increase the leaf's number and rotate the axis again. I then duplicated the first level several times and voila! Here is a low poly succulent plant. For hanging plants, I use curves, but not the bezier ones. I prefer to start with a vertice. For that, I just create a random mesh. I keep a single vertice. I change its origin to make it easier to move and I recenter it. In edit mode, just extract the vertice again and again until you get the desired shape. Don't forget to convert it to a curve because it's still considered as a mesh. I finally put a curve modifier on the plant. I select the curve and then I can drag the plant along the curve. This is how I made my hanging plants. Finally, for more chaotic plants, I used Blender's particle system and I chose the hair version. With this, I can control the number of leaves, the seed, their rotation and their scale. I just need to switch the render as an object and select my reference leaf. Then I can adapt the parameters until I get what I want. For the leaves textures, I hand painted them on Substance Painter. I used a fill layer for the color base and simple layers for painting patterns. 
When I import the textures into Blender, I like adding some additional nodes such as RGB curves or hue saturation value node. It allows me to have even more control on my texture display. I can adapt it to the rest of the scene and then choose the best color match. I also like to add subsurface scattering, but just a little. It allows the light to go through the leaves. With those techniques, I managed to basically create all planes I wanted. You just need to be creative. Of course, I didn't hesitate to look for even more planes references when I needed new ones. The next assets follow the same steps as for the room. I start with the low poly version I do on Blender, I import it to ZBrush and then finally sculpt the details I want. For books, I just used an additional technique uh, besides the ones for the wood to make some specific details. I'm starting by selecting an area, then I go to deformation and I add inflate, not too much. This allows to make interesting relief on the corners of the book. After a quick unwrap, I switch to substance and use smart materials again. For books, I added some gold parts with metalness and worthness to make illumination like. I made all my decoration assets according to this workflow. That's to say, low poly, sculpting, unwrapping, baking, and then texturing. I didn't make my assets all at once. I preferred to model them little by little to see if they fitted well in the scene with the colors, shapes, and scales. I try to respect the color palette of my main reference and I give a cozy feeling while sticking to my desire of giving this impression of an artistic mess like in modern witch rooms I wanted to make for my very first idea. I'll now show you how I rendered my scene. I chose the EV render engine. Until then, I rendered on Cycles and I wanted to try on Eevee this time. I used four lights for my scene. There is a sun, two spotlights, and an area one. The sun provides the main lighting. That's what gives to the whole scene its visibility. The spotlights are here for the sun rays coming from the window. I will show you next how I made them. And finally, the area light provides a warm look to the room. I changed its color a bit for this warm vibe, as well as for other lights except the sun, because the diorama would be too orange. Well, for good rays, I made them volumetric by using a volume cube. Here you can see if I move my cube, the rays work only inside it. So I made sure that I included all of my room into it. To make it, I start by creating a cube. It can be another mesh, but the cube is more convenient here. I make sure all of my room and assets are inside it. Then I create a new material for the volume. I don't need the principal BSFD, so I just remove it. Instead, I apply a volumetric volume which I connect to the material output's volume. And here it is. As you can see, the volumetric lights are already working. I just need to decrease the density and look for the rays visibility I want for my scene. Here, 0.02 is good enough. And here is the light result. Don't forget to increase the light's power a lot, or it won't work. Before ending this video, I'll just show you the EV parameters I like to use. First of all, the ambient occlusion. Without it, your scene would look just too strange, because the objects wouldn't have their own shadows. Usually, I like using Bloom, it gives a dreamy and fairy sensation. But here I chose to not use it, because I didn't want my scene to be too foggy and the volume cube provided already some fog. As I have some metallic parts in some of my objects, the screen space reflection parameter is essential. Without it, the golden parts I textures wouldn't be visible as metal. 
so it was important to add it in my diorama. For shadows, I prefer to use soft shadows, especially if I want a cozy and warm look. Hard shadows would have been too sharp in here. I also increased the sampling to have the softest shadows possible when rendering. Another option I don't need to forget is the contact shadows, which you can find in your light parameters. If you don't activate it, you will have these light leaks through your objects. So here is basically how I proceeded to create this diorama. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown video and I hope you learned something from my workflow. I would like to thank Stylized Station for showcasing my work. If you want to see more of my work, you can go check my station. Good luck with your projects and take care. See ya!